Thanks for staying with us. We are now at our first hot topic, and which is uh, conflicting court orders. CJN vows to deal with errant judges. Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Olukayo De Ariwola, has expressed concern over conflicting and misleading judgments from courts of coordinate jurisdiction. He emphasized that the National Judicial Council, NJC, is taking steps to address and sanction judges responsible for such actions as they undermine the credibility of the judicial system. During the inauguration of 22 judges to the Court of Appeal, Justice Ariwala criticized the frivolous interlocutory orders that tarnished the judiciary's reputation. He reiterated that punitive measures will be enforced to ensure errant judges face the consequences of their actions, maintaining that judges must serve the Nigerian masses by delivering fair and unbiased judgments. <coughs> Justice Ariwala also saw in 12 new judges to the Federal Capital Territory High Court, urging them to uphold their oaths of office. He highlighted the unprecedented number of judges being appointed due to the rising litigation in Nigeria, which he attributed to an increase in crimes and political matters. The CJN called on the new justices to handle the increasing caseloads with diligence and integrity. With upcoming governorship elections in Edo and Ondo state, he stressed the importance of adhering to the law and maintaining public trust in the judiciary by avoiding actions that could lead to infamy or dissatisfaction among the Nigerian populace. We have a guest this morning that will be discussing this with us. Barrister Justice C. Uwebu is a human rights lawyer. Good morning and welcome to the program, sir. Good morning. It is my pleasure once more. Okay, I, I was just asking the previous guest now. Uh, we didn't have time for answering that question. It was just on the headline. I was asking, now that the CJN is talking about the fact that judges will be sanctioned and that there's a mechanism being put in place now to make sure that uh, in the nearest future, whenever a judge is, is going to be punished, is it that there were no mechanisms put in place before now? Or uh, have we been having a judicial system that the judges could do anything and get away with it because there's nothing to hold them uh, to account? Well, the, the truth is that um, <clears throat> there have been mechanisms all this while to checkmate some of these things or uh, the excesses of some adjudicators. Uh, it didn't start today, and, and that is one of the reasons why NJC was set up in the first place. But the only problem is that over time, corruption. Uh, and the impunity set in, and that's why we are seeing all these things. It's not as if that the mechanism, the mechanism has always been there, the agency has always been there. In fact, to also tell you this, that um, uh, in the past, some judges have also been sanctioned, you know, in the past. But the problem is that uh, uh, impunity, like I said, and corruption became so much. That is why it seems nothing has been done or nothing is happening in that uh, sector. That's just the truth. So, if the if the measures have been there already, how sure are we that it, it would happen now uh, that people would actually yes. um, implement this? So, because it's one thing for um, for the for the CJN to come out and say, okay, this is what we're going to do, but it's another thing to implement it. So, how sure are we that um, the judges would actually have the right judgment to to pass across? Yes, I agree with you, but the thing is this, uh, like I keep on saying, I've said in the past, and I keep on saying it, that one of the major, in fact, the major problem we have in Nigeria today is what I call lack of sincerity of purpose. Mm -hmm. So if we were sincere in what we are doing, and people would uh, discharge their duties without fear or favor, we won't be having some of these things. And you see, why the thing seems as if it's an issue now is because Nigerians are complaining. Everybody is complaining. In fact, it, has, it, it, it is turning to a notorious fact. That is just a thing. So uh, the, the bastardization of certain things uh, is becoming too much in the country. And everybody is not crying. Uh, you and I will agree that um, uh, the, the masses are now, you know, shifting away or not believing again the, the saying that the judiciary is the last hope of the common man. And that is why you see all these things happening. Because people have been asking, is actually judiciary in Nigeria the last hope of the common man? Because when you see certain things that happen, it now seems that as if um, 
uh, 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 what do you call it? Justice is now for the rich and not for the poor. Uh, justice is now, you know, meant for a particular section of people. And, you know, Nigerians are worried. I think that is why they call for this. And this is a call to duty, as far as I'm concerned. He's not just saying it like you say. The CGN has to be, you know, very, very proactive and very serious about this. Because actually, the whole system is deteriorating. Now, the question is, what led to this? Because some people are saying that uh, now that, that they're talking about... Uh, increasing the allowances or the salaries or the, the whatever you may call it of the judges things like this may not happen anymore do you think that is the only problem or it goes beyond remuneration the truth is this it goes beyond that for me it's not a matter of uh, increasing their salary even if you increase their salary to one billion a month it will not solve the problem for some of them the truth is this the issue or the post of adjudication like judges, like we used to know before, even when we were in school as lawyers, it's something you have to do with passion. It's a call to duty. It's something that has to do with integrity. Like I said last time, when I was in secondary school, we read a novel in literature that is, that, that is titled The Incorruptible Judge. And we learned a lot from there. Now ask yourself a question. What are the likes of, uh, of, of Blazer Memory of, uh, what was his name, uh, Okuta JNC? Then, Kayo Denso and all of them. We once had judges in this country who whom Nigerians we are proud of, whom Africans we are proud of. For example, uh, uh, Okuta of Blazer Memory, some of us, like me, I call him the Lobdeni of Africa. So it's not a matter of uh, increasing their salary. It's a matter of, uh, you know, when you don't have passion for anything, you don't have passion for it. Mm -hmm. Secondly, and which is the most important thing we must look at, let me tell you. For the fact that governors and the executives still have hand in appointment of judges, it will definitely be like that. Because a, 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 a governor can stay in the comfort of his home or office and call a judge. I'm interested in this matter. Look at what I want. Likewise, every other uh, of, uh, officer in the, in the executive and others. That is, and they, again, you see, today, formally, formally, most, most people don't even want to be judges or magistrates because they see it as a strenuous job. Because definitely you must live above board. Definitely you must maintain that integrity. But today it's no longer like that. Some people now, some 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 uh, uh, governors now use it. In fact, to even settle uh, some lawyers whom they feel that are working for them or that have worked for them. So that is the problem. It has been politicized. That is just the truth. But well, were there no were there no were there no constitutional provisions for the appointment of uh, judges? Uh, is it is it that we just have just jettisoned the law and are doing what is not supposed to be done? No, 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 no. There how are come? How come governors and the president they have no, the hand? No, 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 you see, if you remember what I said, I thought I thought about integrity, being being somebody with impeccable character. You see, we, for example, I'm I'm qualified to be a judge anywhere today, even in the Supreme Court. But it's not a matter of me being qualified. Any lawyer is qualified. He wants you up to a certain uh, years in the bar. It's not a matter of being qualified. It's a matter of, do you have the integrity? Do you have the passion? These are the two things we should look at. It's okay. not a matter of being qualified. Yeah, qualification is there. Mm -hmm. So the, 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 the professions are always there. But what you are saying is this. The people you are calling to duty, do they have the passion? So talking about yes. integrity, yes. right, yes. what ways can we ensure that the integrity of these judges are being safeguarded? What measures we to ensure that there is credibility in the justice system? Let, okay, let me give you an example. The truth is this. We know ourselves. Mm -hmm. For example, let me give you an example. Mm -hmm. Before judges are appointed, like in the states, MBA of that state, of the branches of that state, will have to be involved. Mm -hmm. Because their names will be sent for them to vet, and the the CJ will always call for uh, reactions when the names are published. You can you can actually write to the CJ. So 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 person so so person is not is not qualified because I feel this person doesn't have integrity. Mm -hmm. 
and this, this and that. And once you write, those things are supposed to be investigated. But nowadays, like I said, some of these things are now swept under the carpet because you want to favor some people. Maybe the governor has his list and this and that. That is what I'm trying to say about corruption and impunity. So that is just the truth. And that is why we get to where we are today. That's what was about it. Hmm. So by law, it shouldn't be the governor or the president uh, selecting who will be the judge. No, no, no. no. I, well, what, is the, what is the duty and the work of the NGC? Hmm. The, 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 the governor will always, as the, as the uh, uh, number one citizen in the state, he will always be there. He is the one that inaugurates them and all the But what we are trying to say, the process of selection, it's not like what is happening today in appointments and all the rest. Once you are an anointed person, can anybody stop you? So until we, we, we move away from that practice, and that practice has now gone across everywhere. And that is why we are having a decade institutions in this country everywhere. Mm. So you do, we, we know ourselves. We know people that have the passion. We know people that have the integrity. But even somebody, uh, for example, if I'm appointed or my name appears now as one of the people who are listed for uh, Federal High Court judge, State High Court or Court of Appeal, people are supposed to write. Interesting. And when they write and maybe the CJN is not interested, the CJN is not interested, nobody is saying, they will speak, to, speak to under the carpet and go ahead and do what they want to do. <laughs> so in a nutshell, is the fault of the bar, is the fault of the uh, legal person, uh, uh, the, the bar, it yes. Is, no, 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 that's that that what I'm trying to tell you, that it oh. is political. Mm. Mm. It is political. Let me give you an example. If, if somebody writes against me now, you understand, and the governor has interest in me, or any power broker has interest in me. I don't think that thing can fly. Mm. Because we're no longer interested about, you know, sanitizing the, the system or Nigeria or the, in, the country entirely. We're only interested in our personal interest. This person is my boy. This person is my person. This person is my person. Let him be there. Whether come brain or come so And that is why we're facing the calamity we're facing today in Nigeria, in every sector. Yeah. It's quite unfortunate that because this is this still boils down to corruption and it just shows how corruption has eaten deeply into our society. So even the justice system that you expect to be credible is not really credible enough. For the citizens but my question now is what is the legal um implication especially for these judges now who are probably going to put out judgments that are you know just not right so what is going to be the legal implication for them maybe because you've said well, um there's there's been measures in the past but it's just that we've not really looked at it so what what are they supposed to do are they supposed to face the justice system as well what happened oh, what well, happens to them oh, well, th well thank god that the cjn has come up now to say this. Just like you said, we wish that he will maintain it and live above God. Mm. Understand what I'm trying to say? The mechanisms are there. Because one, by the time you punish or penalize one, two, yeah. three, four, five, and there are about others who sit up. True. I know that it's no longer business as usual. But for the fact that A did it, and he went uh, free, this person will say, we also want to do it. I will call somebody. And it is killing our system, whether we like it or not. You are talking about interlocutory injunction. It's not only interlocutory injunction. There are some, there are judgments that are conflicting. There are, they are putting people, putting the whole system, the whole country in a mess. So we are we are all citizens of this country, and we want the best. Let me tell you the truth. And let's have this as a take home. Mm. Any country in the world that is judicial system collapsed, that country is finished. Yeah. That's why we must be very, very careful. So the judiciary is the only arm of government that can rekindle any country when that country is going down. Mm. Wow. By so, taking proactive measures and doing the need for and the right thing at any time. Okay. This problem is like an onion, you know. It has yeah, it's, it's just peeling. Yes. Yeah. So now there is some form of distrust between the citizens and you know the judicial system but i want to ask you you're a lawyer how confident are you that with the measures going to be put in place because let's forget about the past now we're starting on a clean slate how confident are you that the the justice system is going to be reliable going forward well the truth is that uh, despite despite 
few challenges. Uh, we have always trusted and believed in the justice system. Despite few challenges, because uh, there are nothing you can do. You cannot resort to self help or barbaric way of doing things. You also go to judiciary, which is said to be the last hope of the common man. But with the, what the GNCJN have said, uh, we trust him, we hold him to a high esteem for somebody to, uh, to rise to that level in our judicial system. I believe him. I believe some of those things that have been neglected. In fact, there are certain things, certain rules, certain mechanisms that have been neglected in the past. So I believe what he will do is to go and rekindle those mechanisms so that in order, you know, to sanitize the system again, so that people will begin to have trust on judiciary, the masses will be comfortable, and all the rest. And again, um, I'll, I'll, I will also use the opportunity to also say that the CJN should also, uh, you know, make sure that uh, the judges advise. Because let me tell you, the major problem we have in this country today is the politician, the active politician that will want to manipulate everything, and that is why we are seeing some of these things today. So when it, when, when certain things are done, and the, uh, uh, the, 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 the commission takes a very proactive measure. It will serve as a deterrent to others because integrity is the watchword. There are no two ways about it. Okay, integrity is the watchword. As we wrap up, let, let's, just see, uh, let's just say this. Um, what are some of the things you would want the CJN to start doing? Uh, because uh, if the laws have been there and it's the will to implement them that is lacking and he has voiced it, that means he wants to do it. Where does he start from? If you were to advise the CJN, how does he go about it? Well, like you say, if I'm to advise him, it is my constituency and uh, we, we know the problem some of us are facing, even as practicing lawyers, holistically in the judicial system, you know, like matters taking long than necessary, some frivolous applications in court and some uh, some conducts of the judicial, sorry, of the adjudicators and the, all the rest. You know, like I said earlier, the CJN knows what to do. He is in the system. He is uh, a lawyer. But before you become a judge, remember, before you become a judge or an adjudicator, you're first of all a lawyer. So because of that, you know the rudiments, you know the rules. We have what is called RPC, rules of professional conduct for lawyers. We have what we call uh, uh, Labor Professionals Act, LPA. So we have all these things to guide us so that we cannot derail. Then even in, in the bench, because uh, a, a judge is a member of the bench while we are members of the bar. But before you become a judge, we are once a member of the bar before you become a, a member of the bench. Like I uh, uh, Oputa uh, of Blessed Memory, when he was alive, I was opportunity to meet him, interact with him one on one. I asked him a question when I was in school. I asked him, what is the difference between a judge and a lawyer? And simple, he answered me that a lawyer, a person lawyer is somebody who stands in the bar to talk and argue matters. Why a judge or an educator is someone, after long standing in the bar, is called to sit on the bench. You cannot see that definition. After long standing in the bar. So what it means is that after long standing in the bar, you must have acquired the experience. You must have acquired the integrity. You must have, you know, get, you know gotten to a certain level. Then you'll be called to sit on the bench. Hmm. So, like what is happening now, the CJN, I believe, as a man of integrity, he knows what to do. Very simple. Just to rekindle all those mechanisms and the rules that have been guiding the legal profession before now. Well, we do hope right. it gets to that point because that's the last hope of the common man. Mm -hmm. And like you said, nations crumble when their judicial system is not working. Uh, good luck to the CJN and every other person who wants to uphold uh, integrity in uh, that sector. We'd like to thank you, Barista, for coming on the program today and sharing your thoughts. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. We've been talking with thank Barista you. Justice C. Ehuebu, a human rights lawyer. He was talking to us from Abuja and we're looking at the, more or less the reform in the judicial system as uh, brought uh, by the CJN of Nigeria. We'll take a short break and return with our second part topic. Stay with us.